Hey, so if you're like me, uh, you're easily annoyed. And uh, as a programmer, um, being easily annoyed is uh, it's a virtue. At least I tell myself that. Um, and what uh, one thing that I, I, I hope you've been annoyed about um, is our use of the support fragment manager in our single activity applications. So, you know, we have a single activity, we want to swap in a bunch of fragments, and we have to sort of grab the fragment manager, and we have to create this um, uh, factory method and pass arguments through a bundle. And, you know, if all that stuff just makes you annoyed, uh, then uh, the navigation utility might be for you. So uh, the Android uh, you know, people realize that everybody was doing the same work for their apps and therefore uh, sort of doing it poorly, occasionally getting it wrong, and also just replicating a whole bunch of effort. And so they wanted to uh, help take care of us. And we are going to see two different versions of the same app uh, that do roughly the same things, one of which does not use the new navigation uh, um, functionality in, in Android, and the other one does. So Fire, uh, sorry, Notebook, note, Notebook, Notebook does not use navigation. It uses the same stuff that we use for Reddit and just sort of raw uh, fragment uh, transactions. And then uh, Fire Note, uh, Fire Note does use uh, the navigation library. And so, you know, let's take a look and see what, what it actually buys you because it's a little confusing uh, to get your head wrapped around it. But once you do, uh, there are many huge advantages and then one big disadvantage. Uh, so let's, let's get into it and figure out what those are. Let's start with some advantages, right? It's like, why, why, why am I bothering uh, with this in my life? So I've got here, uh, it's, 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 it's a little bit narrow, but um, I've got notebook on top and I've got fire note on the bottom. And the notebook on top has, you know, all of this, you know, uh, stuff, shall we call, that we have grown to know and hate. Uh, things like, oh, I need to create this transaction. Um, and the, the, the thing, oh no, the, it's in uh, a whole fragment. The thing that really, really, uh, you know, he, well, here's another sort of, uh, I need to create this transaction and, 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 and throw in this fragment. I mean, this isn't, you know, sort of the worst thing, but he has new instance method. I mean, like, you know, really like, um, I mean, I, I told you how to do this and, uh, but I, I didn't say he, uh, you can, you didn't have to hold your nose while you did it. Because, we're, you know, we're passing it, we have to create this factory because fragments can be deleted and, and when they're deleted and reformed, there's no arguments uh, left over. And so we have to create this arguments bundle and put the key, put the, put the position, this integer, put it in, in the bundle. And then we have to remember that position is an integer later. And we have to remember that there's this arguments uh, uh, object. And it, it's, you know, it's just a bummer. Man. I mean, this is like, I just want to program, dude, you know? What do, I need, what do I need this hassle for? And then uh, here's the real, well, I mean, it's all a real pain, but this, this is really, I think, egregious. And that is there's no good interface. So when a, when a fragment uh, sort of becomes, like, like becomes created and becomes the, the, the most visible fragment, at that point, it makes sense to change the title bar. But when it dies or when that, that um, uh, fragment transaction gets popped, there's no easy callback that then tells us like, hey, we need to change the title bar back. And so we did this hack with a backstack entry count. So this is all the way in main activity. I have to just remember when the backstack entry count is zero and then I, I need to... Uh... Oh, this is, uh, oh, this is actually even, sorry, this is creating the image role. Um, uh... Where's, where's, the, where's the case where I have to, I have to remember, I have to restore, oh, that's an image fragment. Let's go down here. Yeah, here we go. So, uh, so um, image fragment is the base fragment. And then I put like an edit fragment on top. And then when that edit fragment goes away, I need to check this, is the backstack entry count zero? If so, I'll reset the title. 
you know, granted, I'm using live data here and stuff, so I'm cool using live data. But this, this whole, this is, this is truly rigmarole. Right? We don't like this. So, what is, what are, what are some of these things look like in the navigation library? Uh, and you know, answer they, they look, it looks a lot better. So, uh, and I'll create, um, you know, and here's a, a reference to, to the navigation. And really, the documentation is quite good, and it's got embedded videos and stuff. So, I, I, I encourage you to look at it. But let's just look at sort of the API level first, because the API level is is really the big win here. So, first of all, there's this fine nav controller routine which uh, actually operates on a fragment, but the, the system is, is smart enough to figure that out for you. So it's just sort of this magic routine, find nav controller, and there's there's some setup for all this. And the, the, the setup is, you know, it's not the prettiest thing, but the how you use it is super pretty. So let's just take a look at it. So we wanna grab the navigation, navigation controller and we need to do uh, some configuration. And this app bar configuration is actually the thing that is going to change the title on the app bar for us. And uh, you know, where does it get these uh, identifiers from? Uh, I'll show you. But uh, these are, are the uh, layouts for the, well, they're not layouts, they're, they're navigation objects for all of our navigation uh, destinations. So yeah, so, so Sorry, so that that's the that's the setup. But you know, what does it look like in terms of uh, sort of simplicity of use? You know, it looks it looks a little bit like this. Um, so here, uh, this is this is um, getting to the uh, image role. So, okay. So here I've got my on items uh, selected, and this is where I'm selecting the menu pictures item. And I have this as sort of a standard when in notebook. And this is, uh, I have to sort of check that the backstack entry count is zero because I don't want to go to the image role uh, at, a, at, a, at a different point, and I do my transaction here. And here uh, I just find my nav controller, and I just set this destination, and that's it. Uh, and how does that work? It works because this item is a menu. The item ID is the is this navigation object. So recall that in the app bar, there are menu items. When you uh, when one of the item IDs matches a navigation object, it goes to that navigation object. Okay, what what are these what are these navigation objects? Let's let's just take a look at this because this is, um, but but I guess without the, I was sort of hoping to avoid this because it's a new abstraction, but without this, it, it doesn't make a whole lot of sense. Okay, so this is the this is the navigation view of your uh, app, and it's it's uh, there's a, a visual view which is which is quite useful, and then there's uh, the XML view which you know is, is useful in a different way. So what this is telling us is, hey, I've got a home fragment. That home fragment can transition to uh, the image. This is the image role fragment. And this is actually a little uh, um, deceiving. I can go from uh, home to image role. I can go from home to, what is this? Uh, uh, oh, the note edit. So this is home to note edit, home to image view. Okay. In this uh, particular case, I don't, I don't have a, uh, I don't have an arc going from uh, the note edit to the the image roll. I, th I think you can actually just do that. But, um, but what's nice about this format is it lets you think about navigation in one place, and it gives you a visual representation of your navigation. So. Uh, Previously in the code, we had backstacks and we had this sort of idea in our head and it wasn't really represented in any one place. And what's nice about uh, the navigation is that it's represented in one place. Um, you can actually, you know, grab uh, the, the, the visual editor is actually useful. Um, uh, so, oh, oh, you know, I want to undo that. Um, uh, but the, the, the visual editor is actually useful uh, here. So let's get rid of this and see, sort of see what does this look like because uh, what's under the hood is also pretty comprehensible. 
There's a navigation object. So that's a new type of thing. Fine. And it's got a start, uh, you know, which is like the, the place where your user starts their navigation. Fine. It's got an ID. Fine. And then we have a bunch of fragments. So let's not, let's not look too carefully at this action thing yet. There's, we have a bunch of fragments. One fragment is the image role fragment. Hey, I remember that. Uh, really? Is it named from, you know, this, is it named by, by uh, this uh, path? It absolutely is. That refers to uh, this code. This code is fra a fragment. It's a view. Edu ut app fire note view. This is my my image role, and it is uh, one of my uh, navigation destinations. Um, the navig in the navigation ID is navigation image role. Uh, the name is, you know, given by this class name, and then it's got this label, and uh, not not surprisingly, you know, th this was generated by the, the ID, so it, it used the uh, it used the the string XML. This label by default gets placed in your app bar, and so uh, you don't have to write any code at all to change the uh, to change the the title of of the uh, fragment when it gets displayed. So. That's the first nice thing. And then this layout just lets, uh, lets the tools give you a, a preview. So uh, this is the image role layout. This is the note edit layout again. Uh, and then this gets a little bit fancy. So let's, let's talk about um, the one thing here, which is an action. So the, this is uh, the navigation graph. The navigation graph has all of the fragments that you might navigate to. And then we also have these arcs that say, I can go from this fragment to this other fragment. The arc is an action, right? The action of navigating. So this uh, fragment, which is our home fragment, has an action. This action is, and unfortunately, uh, the names get a little bit long, um, but the action is navigation home to navigation image role. Hey, that's not bad. And if you recall, from uh, this, you know, we can get to image role. We can also get to the note edit. And in fact, we have another action that is action navigation home to navigation note edit. So, hey, this, you know, this really makes some sense, right? Um, I list all the fragments. And then when I, in my editor, when I add that arc, it actually adds this XML action. We can then go, I went in and edited, I put in this enter and exit animation, which I don't think does anything. I think these are the defaults anyway, but you know, if there's some, some cool uh, navigation you want to use now there, you just sort of say it, you don't have to write a whole bunch of code in order to manage it. So that's another win. Destination. So that's the, that's the action, that's the destination. And, uh, you know, the, the destination is a navigation destination, navigation note edit. That is this ID, navigation note edit. So, you know, we see that there's there's no magic going on here. Like I'm talking about these different um, destinations and then I have arcs between them. And then the, the final thing is what about passing arguments? Because that was always the hassle uh, with fragments is you sort of couldn't pass arguments directly. And in fact, uh, here you can pass arguments and they have a very nice way of passing arguments that's reminiscent of a view model. We're going to see that. And for the note edit fragment, I actually have two arguments. One argument is called position, and it is an integer, and its default value is negative one, which if you recall, we had to sort of do this by hand uh, for the fragments, and here we are just specifying it once in the XML. Uh, we actually have a second argument to this fragment, which is called title, and its, its type is a string, and its default value is new note. What's going to be its alternate value? Edit note, because this note edit does two different things. It creates a new note and it edits an old note. So this uh, argument passing, there's some, um, in the current version of Android Studio, this argument passing is a little bit of an experimental feature. And so there's some 
uh, Gradle stuff you have to add. I kind of don't want to garbage up this video with those details. Uh, all that stuff is is listed in in painful, um, you know, uh, clarity on the web page. Um, but you do have to sort of enable something. My guess is this will be the default uh, fairly quickly. But what does this actually look like? Is uh, you know what I want to get to here because there's there's good payoff. So my home fragment. If I want to create uh, a you know if I want to create a note, this means I need to run the uh, note edit uh, fragment with no arguments because the default arguments are, are negative one and new note. And so I can do this um, uh, convenience function on this navigation uh, object, create nav navigation on click listener, and then r.id action navigation home to navigation note edit. So I'm identifying the action that I want to do, and I'm setting that as uh, an on click listener. Uh, to this navigation object. And this is all being done in response uh, to uh, clicking on the floating action button to create a new node. So um, I, I set my on-click listener to an on-click listener that does this navigation action. So that's pretty nice. That's very compact. And it is uh, expressive in that um, once you define all of the different fragments and all the different transactions, it's very clear how to name those transactions, how to name those transitions. All right, not transactions. Okay, here's a more complicated case that also looks good. So remember in our notes adapter, the previous thing that we had to do is we had to uh, 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 run the edit notes um, fragment and we had to pass it uh, the, um, the index. So here we create an action object. Here we don't need to create an action object because there's no, we're not passing any arguments. But here we're actually passing arguments. And so we create an action. Uh, uh, and this also is the, uh, let's focus on the, the positive. The positive is that all the stuff is auto generated for us. The, the sort of not positive is that the names are very long because it's auto generated just using the, the, the names that we give it. You know, we like to use expressive names. So the name starts with the name of your fragment and directions, right? Because this is sort of like how your fragment is directing itself through this graph. And this fragment directions object has a bunch of actions, just like this ID that we, that we created. This is now auto-generated for us. This action goes from navigation home to navigation note edit. And this name is auto-generated. And what's also auto-generated is because we told it what arguments and what types they were, it will say, hey, you need to pass me an integer, uh, optionally, and you need to pass me uh, a string. And I just pass them in here, uh, passing my position, and I'm passing uh, edit note as opposed to new note. And that becomes this action. And that action we pass to find navcontroller.navigate. Okay. So, um, you know, th there's actually a version you could write of this. You, you can say find navcontroller.navigate. Let me see. Let's see if you can do, you can do find. Do find navcontroller dot uh, navigate. I, I don't, oh, I think, yeah, you can even say r.id dot action, yeah, navigation home too, All right? So we can do, we can do this, um, but that's not non click listener. And so we would have to wrap this in a Lambda. That's why, that's why I use this sort of navigation, um, you know, but this, this is conceptually, you know, here we're doing navigate to an action and that action, um, is this generated type safe um, arguments. Here, it's just the ID uh, of the action that we want to take. And the ID is fine. OK, so that is uh, sort of the joys of uh, the navigation um, uh, system. Uh, again, the benefits are 
it handles, um, oh, oh, sorry, let, let's see the arguments. So the arguments are here. So again, this, this looks a, a lot like our view model, right? We say view model by activity view models, and we say uh, arguments by nav args. So nav args, this is just this magic function that's given to us by the runtime. It's going to have the arguments in a type safe way. Uh, note, this is, a, um, this is an auto-generated type name uh, that is based on the name of our fragment and then just args. And then I have I get this args object, and I can access this args args object uh, whenever I want. And let's see, um, right? So that's what I do in on view created. I grab the position out of this argument, and and bear in mind here that now the compiler knows this is an integer. I don't have to do any uh, silly stuff about putting it into a bundle. Um, there's no factory method for this fragment, so. You know, it does clean up a lot. Uh, it's, it's quite nice. So um, that's uh, that's the position. And then even, uh, let's see, where is the, um, uh, this should be another. Oh, no, actually the uh, um, the title. Oh yeah, this is, this is another thing. That's actually, this is pretty cool. Uh, the title I, this is sort of, um, this is called uh, data binding. And we don't do too much of it in a course and uh, it's for, for various reasons. But in, in this case, it's, it's, just, um, uh, it's just too delicious to pass up. So recall uh, up here for the label, the label is what goes in the action bar. And the label is just a string, string constant, right? No problem. Well, you know, why bother with a constant when you can have a variable? So you're allowed to say, hey, I have a variable in this um, fragment called title, and I want you to put the value of that variable into this label, which is going to put it into the, uh, the app bar. And uh, it's either going to be new note or, in the other case, edit note. And because this is uh, the argument name title, it matches this, and it just takes care of it for us. So takes care of it for us, or we're telling it how to take care of us. So that's that's pretty sweet. OK, so these are all the advantages of using the navigation framework, uh, fairly tight uh, and type safe expressions of how to get from one fragment to another with a fairly modest upfront cost of having to, to put these fragments and define this navigation object. I will also say, in the uh, main activity, uh, you have to have this object, this nav host fragment. And the nav host fragment is the thing that we're configuring. It's the thing that's swapping the fragments in and out. Not surprisingly, there's you know something we have to sort of put in to our, our layout in order to do it as part of Android X. Right? So uh, fairly, fairly modest, I think, upfront cost to get all of this uh, nice um, interaction of fragments and arguments and management of the back stack. And I will say that even, you know, there is still a concept of a back stack. So in our note edit, we actually, you know, in order to exit, we don't call, you know, we don't call finish in a fragment. We do call pop the back stack, but we just call it from our, our nav controller, which is, you know, this sort of ambient thing, you know, um, you know we're, we're, we're calling it here again. Okay, so there is still a notion of a back stack. It's just not one that's managed directly by you. It's managed by the nav controller. So lots and lots of benefits. Now, what's the one sort of key disadvantage that I said about, uh, mentioned was gonna, gonna happen in the beginning? Well, so here's the model of uh, Android from the very beginning. And that was, uh, you have a series of activities, or you have a series of fragments, the one that is visible, uh, I guarantee, is in memory. Anything that's not visible, uh, I might kill because I might need memory. And this happened very, very early on when you know devices didn't have a lot of memory. So what we have been doing is cheating a little bit. What we do is we have one fragment that has some local variables, some dis about its display state, 
and we add a new fragment on top, which is a hint. It's telling the, the um, runtime, hey, don't get rid of me because uh, I'm going to come back. So just add me, add sort of the, the thing that goes on top of me, and then uh, pop, pop that one off. And then I'm still here with my display state. And that's actually effective. Um, it works. The uh, system, by and large, will not kill this fragment uh, while this one is visible. However, it is free to do that. And in the navigation case, it does it like every time. So in the navigation case, we are not adding one on top of another. We are always replacing. And so there's, you know, the, the right. So it's more Spartan in its uh, resource usage. But what that means is uh, when we when, when we do um, uh, when when we are in our uh, uh, home fragment and we're displaying a list of notes, yeah, uh, and we have uh, an, an image adapter that has a local variable, and then uh, we edit one of those notes, and then we come back, the image adapter is fine because it had some, it had a local variable and it still exists in memory and, and we're all good. Now, the thing is, while uh, that edit was going on, we might've been run low on memory and this fragment could have been killed, which means when we restore, uh, the uh, display state is going to be uh, back to the default. And that would be confusing for a user, not deadly, but it would be confusing. In our case, if we store that stuff in a local variable, uh, we're gonna lose it every time. So here in image adapter, when we're trying to figure out, sorry, not image adapter, in notes adapter, when we are trying to figure out, hey, am I expanded? In notebook, we store this in a local variable. And here, we store it in the view model. Because the view model never goes away for the entire length of the app. And so it will maintain its state. So, you know, this is a little bit like the, uh, the uh, navigation utility gives and it takes away. Uh, in this case, it's sort of taking away by making things a little bit more complicated. I have to, I can't, I can't use my local variables. But the sort of flip side is you sort of shouldn't have been using your local variables to begin with because they can go away in low memory situations. So I, I don't know, you know, this is, this is something you have to look into your own soul to sort of figure out like, do you believe in the Spartan uh, reality of what the Android programming model tells you, which is, hey, my fragment, uh, I'm only guaranteed to have one of them in memory at a time, and I, I need discipline in order to, to stick to that contract? Or are you like, that's just a relic of the past, man. The, the, you know, the system has all these resources and it should be generous with those resources and we should be programming to that more generous uh, API. And, you know, yeah, maybe it's a hint, but it's a hint that it should be using. I don't know, it's a little bit of a philosophical question, but the wins uh, with the uh, uh, navigation uh, utility are, are big enough that I went for it and I was happy. Um, I had this one hassle with my uh, local variables, but once I sort of realized what was going on, it wasn't sort of deathly. The other thing I just want to mention is, let's say you're interested in the uh, navigation uh, utilities. Definitely, you know, I encourage it. There's great documentation. It is a little complicated uh, in terms of being overwhelming. And so what I did and what I recommend doing is going into making a new project and using bottom navigation. By default, bottom navigation installs a navigation uh, menu for a uh, graph for you. It enables all of the uh, navigation calls. And you can then actually quite easily go in and just sort of disable the bottom navigation part of it and use all, all the, the navigation graph. So I created this by doing bottom navigation, getting rid of the bottom navigation, but using this mobile navigation. Uh, all this fragment definition, all this stuff came from uh, Android Studio when it originally wrote it. And it's just, you know, and it also it also generated this, this fragment for me. So all the stuff I didn't have to do any work for. I just had the, uh, the default uh, case for it. So that's, uh, that's, that's a little bit of a trick. Okay, so uh, yeah, that, that's uh, how to use the navigation uh, utility and sort of how it plays out in our notebook and Firebook 
FireNote uh, apps. Thanks.